What's up, Feature Fighters? Zack Zack here. I got a deck profile for you guys. This deck profile is featuring Hero World. Now, specifically, we're featuring Dark Heroes. So, Dark Heroes is a deck that dropped with the Zimverse Omni Lord. It dropped before then. I mean, I obviously had a deck profile before. But the Mukuro Ninth Omni Lord helps a lot. So, to, to kick off what this card is, it's Ninth Omni Brave Lord Mukuro. He is a size 2 monster, a 5 2 5. Dark Hero, Omni Lord, and he's got the ability. At the end of the battle of this card, if you do not have a monster on your field, you may pay one gauge if you do stay in this card. And for this turn, this card gets plus one critical. This ability activates once per turn, and he's got transform for one gauge. So his ability basically only works if he's transformed because he would count as the monster on the field, so he wouldn't be able to stand. But this is where a lot of power lies. Dark Hero getting some. Some small defense I like to call it because he is a 5 2 5 so that item power is good. I don't know if I would say it's super relevant. It is good though. And uh, he is he is what makes Dark Heroes especially lethal because 2 then 3. And as you know, if you don't know, most of the Dark Heroes either kill themselves or bounce back to the hand. So it's not that, actually all that difficult to get no field. To have no field. So, of course, we play four copies of the buddy, Mukuro. Uh, for the next, for the size two, we have two copies of uh, Violet Valor Lord Crow. He is a size two, a 6 2 4, Dark Hero. When this card enters the field, put the top card of your deck into your gauge. At the end of battle of this card, if you have another Dark Hero on your field, destroy this card. <clears throat> so, it doesn't specify monsters, so if you have your items equipped, you would kill themselves. Um, I play this card at 2. Um, it's a bit of gauge excel. Um, he's an excellent turn opener because he'll act as a chump block for at least one attack. Um, Hero World does not have... I think they only have one shield, technically, if you don't count Mock Bravers. Which is kind of unfortunate, but uh, you just build your deck to kind of rush him down. And uh, this guy's good, too, for making sure you have enough gauge to ramp into with Impacts and Mukuro, because he needs one gauge to activate his ability. Then we play one copy of Shadow Hero Shorts. Uh, this is an old E, but he's a size 2, 724. Seven, uh, Call cost, pay one gauge and discard a Dark Hero from your hand. Dumb Strike. When this card enters the field, destroy a monster in your opponent's field. At the end of this, uh, at the end of the battle of this card, return it to your hand. Um, admittedly, I should probably bump this up um, against, I don't know what you call it, size 3 decks. I would be more tempted to play Archer's Training, but he does. He does help a lot. Um, he is tutorable, but with but he is of the lowest rank, which you really should keep in mind. So playing two might not be a bad idea. I do like to play. I'd have one in the sideboard just for certain matchups. But um, I don't like the fact that his call cost is part of the, the discard is part of his call cost. So if you're not fortunate enough to open with first here or hideout, it it kind of gets expensive really quickly to play him because he's two cards to play and he bounces he doesn't have field presence but the fact that he bounces is really awesome uh, now we go to size ones we play four copies of the scar he is a four three four size one at the end of this battle destroy this card um <clears throat> I like him because three crit and because he destroys himself um, I like the spell card, but he is of the lowest rank, which requires a monster be destroyed on your side of the field. So at first I was leaning towards more of the bounce, guys that bounce back to your hand, but I, I wanted to ensure that the deck had a, a fair amount of cards that destroy themselves so I could activate this tutor spell, which we will go over later. And we play three copies of Judgment. What is this? Hollow Stride Arm. He is a one, size one, three, two, one. When this card attacks and deals damage to your opponent, put a card from your opponent's gauge into his or her drop zone. At the end of this, the battle of this card, destroy this card. Um, before I was actually playing four of this guy, so I can try and force shields early, or give it a gauge if it hits, but uh, I felt that the three crit was more valuable to the deck just because I always felt like I was falling a little bit short. I don't know if that's because my opponent was blocking me too much and I should have had extra shorts in the deck. Or I just needed the one one crit or so to get into impact range, which would ultimately give me the game because the impact is so busted. <clears throat> then for the next size one, 
We, uh, so I lumped the, these are the only two sets of monsters that destroy themselves at the end of battle. Everything else bounces back to the hand. So the first one is Schwartz SD. He has a 3, 2, 1, size 1. When this card enters the field, you may discard a dark hero from your hand, so I like this a lot better. If you do, put the top two cards of your deck into your gauge. At the end of the battle of this card, return this card to your hand. I'm applying at four, so that means if you don't have a fifth Mukuro, this card is an excellent candidate to be a buddy. Um, I like him because he bounces, so I mean you don't necessarily lose hand presence, and he has the really kick-ass ability of being able to discard a dark hero to get extra gauge, which is extremely useful for me for ensuring impact turns. Um, I like him at four. You could easily bump him down to three if you wanted to play the Shadow Diver, which is next. We play at two copies. Darkness Fist, uh, Darkness Fist, right? Darkness Fist Gwen. He's a size one, three, two, two. If you have another dark hero on your field, this card can attack your opponent even if there's a monster in the center. When this card deals damage to your opponent, return this card to your hand. So I'm not knocking this card at all. Um, it's really awesome, the fact that he's a shadow, he's basically a shadow diver. However, the fact that your opponent can shield him and subsequently ruin your, uh, your Mukuro and your impact kind of turned me off to it. I know you could play Brayden, I know you could use, but I'm finished with you, but I still have those cards. I have at least I'm finished with you in the deck still, but I just, if you don't draw into it, I was trying to make the deck assist consistent as possible, and I don't like those combo pieces because if your opponent's not blocking anything, you'll never end up using I'm finished with you or Brayden's because you missed the play timing to actually deal damage, and then what's the point of those cards? Um, for the last dark hero of the deck, so I do only play Gwen at 2 though, so, um, I do, I could also see myself recommending that as a sideboard option for the size 3 wall decks that you can't get through, but I kind of feel like dark hero, especially with Makuro and Ardra's training, can really, 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 really hurt these size 3 decks. And the last uh, dark hero is Shadow Hero Weiss. 3, 2, 1, size 1, call cost 1 gauge. When this card enters the field, you may discard a dark hero from your hand. If you do, destroy an item on your opponent's field. At the end of the battle of this card, return it to your hand. Um, only one, it's item hate. That's that's really all it is. Um, it's nice item hate that bounces back. The 1 gauge can start racking up. But, I mean, this is why you play Crows and Shorts SDs, right? To make sure you have the gauge to do your plays. Um, I would recommend again having another one, at least another one in the sideboard to make sure that you get it when you can. Um, my personal opinion is with Dark Heroes you should probably really be focusing on killing your opponent, doing the something you do best, you know, making your opponent react to you. So the item hates kind of just whatever to me. And for the vital monster of the deck, we play two copies of a superhero. He's a 114 size 1 mock rescue dragon mock braver. And he's got pretty a pretty good ability. His counter act. During the attack on your opponent's turn, pay one gauge. If you do, call this card from your hand to your center and change the target of the attack to this monster. He's a shield. Um I only own two actually. I I don't know if I'd play any more than two. And the fact that I only own the two really makes the the deck building for putting how many copies I have into this deck. Um, I Honestly, he's, he's not a terrible card either. If you don't have Makuro out and they're just swinging with weenies, you can actually get two shields out of this, but if you have Makuro out, it's only one shield because they already have to link attack for 5,000. But he's good. It's a redirector. It's not a classic shield, so he can't be nullified. Now for the spell lineup, we play for four copies of First Dark Hero Hideout. This is... A very important spell to draw into early. It is a set spell. When a dark hero monster enters your field, draw a card. This ability activates once per turn. You may only set this one copy of this on the field. So yes, this is a ridiculous amounts of advantage. Um, from my understanding, if you play Crow and you have this out, you get to choose the order in which you either gauge first or you draw first. But you have to, you, you activate both of them. Um, dark hero. I play it at four just because I want 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 to see it. It sucks. It absolutely sucks when you don't see it. Um, the bl a, bl a blower to this is it is not a dark hero. It is just a draw, so you can't activate most of your discarding effects off of it. But you can discard it with abilities like damage control, for example. So he's not super dead. We play four copies of I've Seen Through Your Moves. This is the generic negate attack spell. If you do not have a monster in the center, which you m will more than likely have no mon monsters on the field anyway, so... Moving on, we play four copies of Damage Control. 
Damage control is a generic card. It's a very useful card. Uh, it's a set spell. And he's got counter act. During your opponent's turn, discard a card from your hand. If you do, the next time damage will be dealt to you, this turn is reduced by two. If the card you discard is a battle duty robo, note the attribute. Next time you would be dealt damage, it would be reduced by four instead. You can only activate this ability once per turn per copy of this card set on your field. So, what this means, ladies and gentlemen, is you discard any of the non damage controls, you reduce damage by two. If you discard a copy of damage control with damage control, you reduce it by four. So, this is an excellent shield. Um, if you need to play around, you can get, I don't know, another, another one of the monsters of the same size, use evil aesthetics, get them both back. It's not really a great plan, but something to consider. And it's mostly just there to ramp into something that keeps you alive one turn longer than your opponent. Plus, like I said before, they don't have a heck of a lot of... They don't have a whole lot of access to shields. They have w very weird shields. Uh, next, I play two copies of I'm Finished With You. This is call cost, destroy a dark hero monster on your field. Put the top card of your deck into your gauge and draw a card. You may only cast I'm Finished With You once per turn. So this is one of the ways that dark heroes have access to clearing their field if your opponent like rested your monster before they could attack or nullify the attack or, or whatever and prevents you from being able to bounce it back to your hand. I'm finished with you is the card you will use to clear your field so you can start activating impacts and Kuro's ability, which is pretty nice. Um, the next card we play at two copies is Evil Aesthetics. Um, this is a spell. Its call cost is one gauge and pay one life. Choose and use one of the following two. Choose up to two dark heroes of the same size from your drop, put them into your hand. Or, choose up to one dark hero item from your drop zone and put them into your hand. So Makuro I would, would not count it as an item in the drop zone. Only your gun, your sneak judgment would count as the item. So, so it's kind of, it's a bit harder. Um, but you can still pluck any items from the, uh, any cards from the drop zone. Which is really useful because if you have like shorts and crows, you might gauge into your pieces, spend the gauge, and then ha pick the card out from the gauge, which could be useful. There's not a whole lot of ways to spend gauge besides like Makuro, but being able to get extra field with like the scar, so if you pluck two scars out of the drop, that's pretty threatening by itself. Next is two copies of Arduous Training. And Arduous Training is a very mean, mean card, especially with Makuro. You may only cast this card if you are transformed into or ride into a card. Cast cost, pay one life, choose an item on your field, and for this turn, give it plus five power and plus one critical and penetrate. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, this means that this 525 becomes a 1035 that can restand and then becomes a 1045. So I mean that's seven damage with just these two cards right here. Not not at, not even adding any of the other cards and keeping also keep in mind that if your opponent's at four or less you can impact them for game with Infinity Death Crest. So it's pretty nice. Um the only part is Again, if you're unfortunate enough to not run into your Mercuros, it really sucks. But it's still a very good card. Um, a card that I definitely, again, recommend having as a sideboard. Um, we play two copies, but he is of the lowest rank. This is a very important spell. You only cast this card when a size one or less dark hero monster on your field is destroyed. Hence why we have so many dark heroes, and hence why we have seven copies of cards that would destroy themselves anyway. Counter, search your deck for up to one Dark Hero monster or item, put it into your hand, and shuffle your deck. You may only ca cast, but he is of the lowest rank once per turn. So if your dudes kill themselves, or if your opponent kills one of your size ones that didn't bounce back, you can search for Makuro. That's basically what it is. Makuro, search for sh uh, Shadow Hero sh Schwartz, or search for any other combo piece you're trying to get. Maybe you need more gauge or something, or you want more field pressure. It's pretty useful. Um, you could probably work it up to three, but the only I, I'm only comfortable with two just because I don't have too many targets that kill themselves. So I feel like two is probably just the right number. Um, I follow kind of the same rule with like I do with continues, where I want to have like seven or eight dungeon enemies to make two continues worthwhile in my head. So those are my ratios. So if you guys like those ratios, let me know. Uh, for the final spell, we play one copy of the Grimmore clone. This is if you're at five or less life, you can discard your hand to draw three cards. So, I mean, it 
can be pretty easy for you to run through your hand, especially with damage control, and if you don't get in a dark hero hideout. And it's just kind of a, like a lifeline to draw into your impact or something. Uh, next we have three copies of Sneak Judgment. This is a pretty good backup item. Um, Makuro obviously being the item you want to go into almost every time if you can. But as a backup we have Sneak Judgment, which is a 4 with 2 critical. Equip cost 2 gauge. If you have another dark hero on your field, this card can attack your opponent even if there's a monster in the center. When a monster leaves your field during the attack phase, draw a card. This ability activates once per turn. Um, so it's another Shadow Dive. You gotta remember that you gotta have another Dark Hero on the field for it to have the Shadow Dive, which is a pretty easy mistake to make, I think. But overall, it's not, it's pretty, it's a decent card. It's a little expensive and it makes me want to lean towards using the sword just because the sword has a 6k clearing power and 3 critical, but I mean, if you have Shadow Dive, what do you need clearing power for? Then last, and certainly not least, is four copies of a Wing Condition, Infinity Death Crest. It is a Dark Hero attribute, which is a very important note. You only cast this card if you, your opponent has four less life and there are no monsters on your field, and you have a Dark Hero item equipped. Cast costs two gauge, deal four to your opponent. The damage dealt by this card cannot be reduced. You don't see that. They can have a monster in the center, so I mean all the Shadow Dives are going to put in work. And you, don't, you can have no monsters on your field, all your monsters bounce back or destroy themselves. And you have an item, which is, you know, your buddy. So, two gauge, four damage, that's pretty good, right? It's so good, it's really annoying. It's almost, it's like Kaiserion impact annoying, but I won't go that far. It's not that, it's not that annoying, because I still hate that impact. But it's, it's, it's your win condition. It's the reason why you play four of them. It's a dark hero, so it makes other dark hero specific things go active. So it's pretty good. Um, I guess the flash, might, the, another card that I was talking about before was... 100 Demon General, Brayden, so this is a card that works like I'm finished with you. It's not in the deck though. It is an 826 size 3, call cost 2 gauge, act I have come. During your turn, you may put a Dark Hero or 100 Demon from your field into the drop. If you do, call this card from your hand by paying its call cost. You know, use this I have come once per turn. At the end of the battle, this card attack, return it to your hand. So he clears, he clears the field. He's a size 3, so he'll knock out everything when he comes out into the field anyway, and he'll bounce back if your opponent doesn't have uh, a reasonable answer to him. Um, I don't really like playing him, and there's that. Um, you might notice a lack of spell null on the deck. Um, the deck can either be really gauge, uh, gauge efficient or ga run over on gauge. I don't run spell null just because I haven't really found a place for it. If I didn't want to play like evil aesthetics or something, Maybe I would play a couple spell nulls. I mean, I have access to them. Um, I probably sideboard them, but I really don't know why I would take them take out of the deck for them. So you can definitely run spell nulls. Uh, spell nulls basically you kind of just link attack for a big number with your your weenie monsters. Spell null the shield that goes out, the curve them down, with an impact for game or something. So don't undermine the importance of the spell null. But uh, this is the deck profile, you guys. Um, if you guys follow me on Facebook, I did actually post up this list a couple weeks ago when I was trying to play test through the list, working through some kinks. So if you guys want to see decks that I'm playing over the weekend, I do post them on Facebook, facebook.com slash zagzag. So check me out on Facebook if you want to see what decks I am playing or play testing. And uh, like, comment, subscribe, leave comments down below if you guys have experiences with this deck, you know certain things that are working, helping other people out in the comments. Anything you guys want to say. Um, and as always, guys, thanks for watching.